start with that point then, David. In terms of, um, you said to us earlier in the week that you won't be bringing any new players in, but circumstances have probably conspired against you. Kevin Pilkington arriving at Field Mill for his second stint at the club. Yes, um, and believe me, I, I haven't uh, gone out of my way to sort this one out. This has been uh, thrown at me, and the circumstances have uh, unfolded that, that uh, Mikel, it looks like, he's going to be out for a period of two to three weeks um, on the advice of Sheffield United. So, um, uh, sadly for him, because he's looking forward to getting some games, but um, the injury was sustained in training at Sheffield United. He played at the weekend, but it got predominantly worse. And um, obviously, I find myself uh, being without a keeper again. So been a lot of hard work um, on securing a, another one and we obviously hope Mikel will um, recover you know, quickly and, and healthily. Kevin Pilgerton, a name known not only to Mansfield Town fans but known to football fans in the, the football conference very well. What will Kevin bring to your side? I think it's very um, important that you, when you bring a goalkeeper in, I mean there's a number of young goalkeepers out there I can bring on loan, but we've got a very able young goalkeeper that hasn't got the experience of um, uh, the, the levels that we want yet, but young Neil is doing great, and I think that you know there's a there's not many young goalkeepers out there that are, are, are as um, up to the standard of Neil. Um, he's very highly rated here, but there's a difference when you're going into um, high level games and you need that little bit more experience. Kevin Pilkinson brings in that experience and that knowledge. He's a league goalkeeper in my eyes, and certainly um, uh, I'm delighted to have secured his services for the uh, the short term. Um, and you know Kevin's uh, of an able character, but likewise mature, and it will only help young Neil as well in training. A three-month loan deal. Any opportunity that that may be extended in the, the longer-term future? Well, you know the design of Kevin's life. Um, we'll look at again, and he's, I've had a you know, very good, healthy conversation with him. We'll look at Alan's um, injury. Whether Alan will need to go out on loan when he gets back. Um, these are things that are, is hypothetical at the moment. But you know we're, we're pleased to have him here and. Um, I'm sure he'll do a very good job for us. You spent quite a bit of time trying to not reassemble really the squad, but you've brought one or two players in. To lose one of your lone players to an injury must have been deeply frustrating. Yeah, it's been it's been um, yeah very frustrating, as you say. Yeah, that's the word. And uh, on the weekend on Sunday, you know, you sort of um, your minds are elsewhere rather than thinking of uh, you know really good positive things. Um, you're having to deal with the situation, and and then really Monday and Tuesday was waiting on finding out about Mikel. So. You know, we're grateful for Sheffield United's um, assistance with everything we've done and uh, uh, you know, Gary Speed understands the situation that we've had to re-enter the, the market to, get, to bring another one in and uh, I'm sure he'll be want, wanting Mikel to recover as soon as possible but we hope he does and we thank him for um, his services so far. Your attention now must be simply trying to settle your squad, squad down, trying to get them gelling nicely and, and kicking on in the league. Yeah, we're, we're very pleased though, David, I will say this, that the... the um, the inclusion of certain more experienced players has been beneficial in the last few weeks and as you say for me I'm trying to keep a very settled squad now as much as possible and um, I want to be able to get these boys integrated but they've done they're doing that well and there's a good texture around the dressing room um, and I think in the, the next uh, few weeks we'll see that coming together. Before we come on to the Crawley game you've talked about that squad settling it down there's a big squad as well. Players going out? Um, well, I've got I think seven, maybe eight on loan going out at the moment. So we're working with a, a squad of um, 21. Um, so it's not too big. But the, you know the boys that are out on loan, they're, they're doing their training with them, uh, their parent clubs for the time being. And we're looking at monitoring those situations um, equally as well as we can. And uh, you know they're keeping their levels right, which is always uh, you know the most important thing is if they do return that they you know they do go out on loan again. Um, they're, they're sufficiently um, equipped to do so, but no, we're working with the, a squad that we see is the right size. Um, and um, if if one or two do need games, and you know, I look at those situations. There have been a few calls recently for uh, one of the two of our players, and you know, but I've been reluctant to continue that because one thing you know, if you do get two or three injuries, we can't bring any more loan players in, and I think it's important that we have a, a squad that sticks together. In the past we've spoken about the fact Mansfield Town don't have a reserve team. You've got a new owner who's said he's going to put money into the club. Have you asked for a reserve team? These are issues, David. You can't just go into a reserve league halfway through a season. So um, uh, that was something that we're going to look at. We do think it'd be a benefit. I had a very, very um, uh, good night the other night with the um, Ollerton Stags, um, where that issue was raised up as well. And um, fans, are, uh, you know, they want to keep our players inside the club. 
which is, is right, but when they do need match practice, um, they have to go out on loan. And, uh, we are looking at that situation. It's something that I will discuss, I'm sure, with um, the, uh, the the chairman and the chief executive. And, you know, even so, this morning we've done that. And these are issues that we will, over the forthcoming months, that we'll try to address and bring back to the football club. It's like the youth development. We, we certainly um, advise on uh, the, the structure that we would like. Um, and if we can do that, then it'll be healthy for the club. You mentioned that meeting with Stag supporters in Ollerton. What did you learn in that meeting? Um, there's certainly uh, uh, healthy support. I felt that they were, there were some very good um, uh, constructive uh, questions. And um, we answered them in uh, the, you know, it wasn't just about the team, it was about the, the bigger picture of the football club. Um, and, and that seems to be very healthy. So myself and uh, Mr Barker uh, attended that and answered the questions. And we feel that the, you know, the support was certainly uh, fully behind the club. Does it continue to surprise you the passion that some supporters have for this football club? No, not at all. Um, I think I learned that from the day one. That they, you know, I said it before. They're vociferous. They're opinionated, but they're very, very much so um, in demand. We need them on our side, and every club needs supporters um, that are fully behind the club, and none more so than ourselves that have, in you know, previous times found it tough. But we have a, a, a new owner that has a direction that he wants the club to go in. And, and I'm fully appreciative of the fact is that you know we want to be able to take the club forward in, in strides not only on the pitch but off it. Before we come on to the crawl again, just to pick your brains on another local matter in football, Paul Lynch, someone that you will have come across in your career, appointed at Notts County. Yeah, I'd like to wish Paul um, every success at Notts County. They've had a they've had a tough time, haven't they? I mean, six managers in in 12 months, so they've um, certainly uh, hopefully looked for stability. It just shows you that you know clubs. Uh, um, chop and change too frequently, they don't get any stability and I'm sure Paul will want to deliver that type of um, mannerism at the club and I'm sure that the chairman will do. I understand your assistant manager Duncan Russell had a very close relationship with Paul in his former coaching jobs, worried Paul might come knocking on his door and take him away from me? No, not at all, not at all, um, that's something that's not been mentioned, um, but Russ, Russ was working uh, with Paul when I went down to MK Don, so I have no uh, concerns about that, but Russ is um, working very hard with me. We, we you know, have a very close relationship and certainly um, we've got healthy respect for Paul and Paul's situation, but nobody's run me and, um, and well, it's business as usual. Crawling this weekend, business as usual. Your team in terms of fitness and health, how are they? Yes, well, um, you know, Keegan's had a, a couple of days training, which is, is good. Um, so, you know, he may be involved at the weekend. Uh, we we look into that situation. Um, Alan is again you know, go over what we've been through be in the next four to six weeks going over that, that uh, recuperation um, and strengthening Mark Priest um, he's had his operation and he can't wait there for um, a four week period so it's going to be tough on him um, and other than that we're, we're fine David so we've got a, a, you know, a squad of uh, around 20 to, to choose from and um, we'll look at them scenarios and uh, how we feel that uh, what's best to accommodate a, a strong side. We have to make room for your captain, Steve Foster? I won't make room for anybody. I'll make room for the people that I feel that can play um, and do a job against Crawley. Um, there's, you know, there's no uh, guarantee for anybody to start a game. Certainly don't accommodate players. I play players who I feel that are going to win the game and given the circumstances we have in one in training and obviously um, uh, regarding suspensions and injuries. So there's no accommodation. It would be a team out there to go out there and roll their sleeves up and, and get a bit muddy if necessary. Crawley on Saturday, they've only had one defeat on the road this season. What does that tell you about the game that you'll, you'll face on Saturday? It tells me that Steve Evans has got a side that's well equipped um, uh, at home and away. Um, a strong squad, uh, much has been made of that, but likewise, you know, you would deal with that. And for me, it's a game that players should relish. I relish it. Uh, um, I've got great admiration for um, Crawley Football Club and their manager, and obviously the way they're doing things. So it's a tough game, and you know, we, we want to roll our sleeves up and have that fighting spirit, and I expect my players to do it. I don't like to repeat questions, but I've brought this point up already this season about your performances and your form against sides at the top of this division. A point to prove this weekend? I think it's a point to prove every week, David. We, you know, we had a, a good win last week, and we want to build on that if we can going into the next round of the football, uh, the FA Cup. Um, so yeah, I mean, but you know, we're not underestimating. You know, we give 100% respect to to Steve's side, but likewise, our players are going out there to, to one earn their shirt, as we've just spoken about, and secondly, um, play against a side that you know are expected to to win the the, the, uh, the league. 
but there's no better, it's a yardstick, it's a yardstick from myself and uh, my team and it'll give us uh, an idea on where we want to be I think. Thank you. Pleasure. I'm just getting a bit of additional audio, just going to yep. quality in the corner.